Hello grade 9 science class, welcome back to a brand new unit, the chemistry unit as you can see uh, below. Uh, it starts with chemistry, this is lesson 1, and this one is all about the lab safety rules. So the first thing that we need to talk about before we start doing any kind of work with chemicals, which I'm hoping we're, be, we're going to be able to do, uh, we need to know some of the rules, and there's quite a few of them which is why you can see in the booklet you don't have to copy everything out. There are uh, just some blanks for you to fill in and you need to follow along with me here. Uh, it's important that we hear some of these um, because uh, you're expected to know them not only in grade 9 but all the way throughout your high school career. At the bottom you're gonna sign uh, the contract. It's a contract with me that says you understand these rules and you're going to do your best to follow them at all times. Um, so if there are any accidents and you say you don't know some rules, we'll go back and we'll be able to talk about what rule um, might have prevented that accident from happening. So let's get into it right away. Uh, so again, the safety science contract. Chemistry is a hands-on laboratory unit. We'll be doing laboratory activities that may require the use of chemicals, lab equipment, and other uh, items which, if used incorrectly, can be hazardous, such as uh, Bunsen burners, which create a flame, or even matches. Uh, to ensure a safe science classroom, a list of rules has been developed and provided to you in the student safety contract. These rules must be followed at all times, and the student must sign their copy. Please read the entire contract before you sign. We're going to do that together essentially today and I'm going to highlight some uh, particular things that may go wrong. Uh, students will not be allowed in the laboratory unless their contracts are signed and given to the teacher, which is myself. So we have some general guidelines which you can note as key point one. Um, we'll get into key point two, three, and four as we get there. So, general guidelines, you're going to conduct yourself in a responsible manner at all times. No horseplay, no pushing, no running. Just be responsible. Uh, you're going to follow all written and verbal instructions carefully. And if you do not understand a direction or part of a procedure, which is what you're asked to do on a piece of paper, um, ask your teacher before proceeding with the activity. Uh, never work alone in the laboratory, uh, so make sure that I am there, no student work uh, in the classroom. No student may work in the classroom without the presence of the teacher, so uh, that should be pretty obvious. If I'm not there, please don't just touch um, everything and mix it all up uh, for multiple reasons nowadays. When you first enter a science room, do not touch any equipment, chemicals, or other materials in the lab area until you are instructed to do so, especially if there might be a class in there before you. Uh, you are you shouldn't be touching anything uh, as it might be waiting to be put away. Um, perform those only those experiments authorized by your teacher. So don't mix things that shouldn't that, that it doesn't say to mix. Uh, carefully follow all instructions, both written and oral. So essentially, what is uh, the instructions on your paper and the instructions that are given during the class? Uh, unauthorized experiments are not allowed. So again, just don't mix random things together. Do not eat food, drink beverages, or chew gum in the laboratory. Do not use laboratory glassware as containers for food or beverages. Uh, so if you are eating at the beginning of class, uh, you should finish it up before you come in. Uh, and only reusable water bottles are allowed in the lab. But when we are doing an experiment, there should be no water bottles at all. Uh, so there should be like no soda at all, no Gatorade. Um, just a reusable water bottle with water in it. Uh, and again, if we're doing an actual experiment, you cannot have any uh, food or beverage at all because there's a risk of contamination. Number seven, you should be prepared for your work in the laboratory. You should read through all procedures before entering the lab. So I'm hopefully going to be able to give you the experiments uh, day or two before you actually do it so you'll be able to read it that is required uh, is you should never fool around in the lab no horseplay no practical jokes no pranks they're dangerous and they are prohibited which means they're not allowed um, eight we are always going to work in a well vented air ventilated area if possible 
Uh, that would be the hood vent that is on the wall. Whenever there's anything producing gas, you want to work there. Uh, and we're going to observe good housekeeping practices. Essentially, when we're doing an experiment, you don't want to leave your binder and your pens and pencils all over the place. Um, you'd like to keep that tidy, maybe put it in your bag. Um, you do, once you're done with a piece of equipment, you want to wash it up if you can and put it back. So work areas should be kept clean and tidy at all times. If there's a spill, clean it up immediately. All of those things uh, would be good housekeeping practices. Don't leave your drawers open um, and things like that. Number 10, uh, be alert and proceed with caution at all times in the lab. So if um, anything is going on that doesn't look right, notify your teacher immediately of any unsafe conditions that you observe. Uh, dispose of all chemicals uh, properly. Never mix chemicals in a sink drain. Uh, so anything with copper causes a lot of problems with uh, pipes. So never ever pour copper down the drain. Just never pour anything down the drain. There should be properly marked um, containers for all of these things. Sinks are to be used only for water. Um, check with your teacher for disposal of chemicals and solutions. Some of them can go down the sinks, but a lot of them can't. Uh, labels and equipment instructions must be read carefully before use. Set up and use the equipment as directed by your teacher. So uh, if you are given equipment, don't set it up in a way uh, that you know is not right uh, in order to make it look like something funny or anything like that. Only use the equipment um, as you should and read all the labels before you uh, do use it. 13 to 15 here. So you're going to try to keep your hands away from your face, eyes, mouth, and body while you're using chemicals because you don't want to contaminate yourself. You want to wash your hands with soap and water after you perform experiments so you don't contaminate anything outside the lab uh, and you're probably going to relax touching your face so you'll um, start to contaminate yourself that way. So wash your hands frequently. Uh, experiments must be performed, uh, per sorry, personally monitored at all times so you're not to leave it uh, alone and wander across the room and ask your friend how they're doing. You shouldn't distract other students. Uh, you shouldn't startle other students or interfere with their experiments. Um, you should be focused on your experiment at all times, personally monitoring it, all of you um, as a group, if you are in a group. 15. Know what to do if there's a fire drill during a laboratory period. So containers must be closed, any electrical equipment must be turned off. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, your chemicals are not spilled uh, or contaminating each other. So you just stop what you're doing. Uh, you close off any containers and you uh, make sure there's no electricity running, no burners running, no matches, anything like that. Everything's put out so that you can leave the room safely. Uh, there's some important things with regard to clothing. So uh, anytime chemicals, heat, or glassware are used, we will wear safety goggles. That counts as clothing. There are no exceptions to this rule. Um, so sometimes I know they're hard to use. So if you are not uh, anywhere, if you turned away and you're taking a couple second break, that is okay to take your goggles off as soon as you get back to it, as you should be personally monitoring it. Um, you should put your goggles back on. Um, you should dress properly during a lab activity. So no long hair, no dangling jewelry. Try to keep loose or baggy clothes to a minimum because they're a hazard. If hair should be tied back. You should take dangling jewelry off. And what's really important is you shouldn't be wearing sandals. You should be wearing closed-toed shoes because if you spill chemicals, you don't want them getting on your feet. Um, they're okay to get on your shoes. Accidents and injuries. So you should report any accident or injury to me immediately, no matter how small. But try not to panic. Don't scream about it or anything. Just let me know if you're cut or burnt, and we will take care of it immediately. Uh, if you or your lab partner are hurt, immediately tell it, uh, like very hurt, loudly yell out my name to get my attention. But again, don't scream or panic um, as we need to do, we do need to act quickly, but um, in an efficient manner as well. And if a chemical should splash in your eyes or on your skin, immediately flush with running water. We have the eye wash station near the door of the lab. So if we're in the lab, 
Um, that will be there, and there's also a shower. So immediately and loudly yell for my name to get my attention, and I will come and assist you. Hold your eyes open while we wash those out, or while um, the chemical is rinsed off you by the shower. Chemicals. So key point two. Uh, all chemicals in the lab are to be considered dangerous. So it doesn't matter what exactly it is, we're going to handle it in the same way. We're not going to touch it with our fingers. We're not going to let the liquid get on our hands. We're going to clean it up immediately, even if it's just water. Uh, when making an observation, we want to stay at least a foot away from the specimen, which means the chemical. You don't taste it, you don't smell it, you don't touch it, nothing like that. You treat it all the same, even if it's just, you know it's benign. You're going to check the label on all chemical bottles twice before removing any of the contents to make sure you know exactly what you're taking. And you only take as much as you need. So you never want to take too much and walk to your table and then have to come back and pour it back. That contaminates the entire bottle. So you only want to take as much as you need. You measure it out there. You never retu return unused chemicals to the original container. So if you take too much, that part is going to have to be uh, disposed of. So you never want to take too much at all. You can't put it back. Uh, you never remove chemicals or other materials from the lab, so you don't want to take them out uh, in your backpack uh, into the hall. You just want to leave them and let them be disposed in the laboratory. Glassware and equipment. So this is key point three. Um, 26. Never handle broken glass with your bare hands. Use a brush and a dustpan to clean up broken glass. Place broken glass in a designated glass disposal container that is on the side near the fume hood uh, and we have a brush and dustpan, no problem. Uh, before you use glassware, you want to look at it to make sure it's not chipped or cracked because when you heat up cracked glassware, it's very possible that it will break. Um, if you don't understand how to use a piece of equipment, ask me for help, please. Um, number 29, do not immerse hot glassware in cold water. If we're using an ice bath, you want to wait for the hot glassware to cool, cool down on its own first because glassware will shatter if you have a temperature change that is very, very quick. And heating substances. So a hot plate is something that heats up substances. You don't want to operate them by yourself. You want to take care that your hair and clothing are at safe distance from the hot plate at all times. And if you use a hot plate, it's only allowed in the presence of a teacher. So make sure that I know that you're using a hot plate. Uh, and it gets very hot very quickly. So don't like be holding it when you plug it in. Make sure that it's sitting there, you plug it in, and then you stay away from the top from then on. Uh, heated glassware remains hot for a very long time. So they should be set aside in a designated place to cool and picked up with caution. We can use heat tongs for protective gloves if we need to. Uh, you never want to look directly into, into a container because if it bubbles, it might splash into your eye. Uh, it is not good at all. And you do not want to place hot apparatus directly on the lab desk. So you don't want to take your glassware and put it on the lab desk as the lab desk is going to be cold and it's going to change that temperature very quickly. So you always want to use an insulated pad and allow plenty of time for hot apparatuses to cool before touching it because if you cool it down too quick again as I said it will break. So uh, we've got two things that I'd like you to do. Uh, the first thing that I'd like you to do is check out this picture. So this is in your notes as well um, and there are a whole bunch of unsafe lab procedures going on so I'd like you to check it out and point out the unsafe lab procedures. There's at least 15 and write them all out um, and we can add them to a combined list in the class when we're all together. Um, we can, what I, the other thing that I'd like you to do, sorry, is to create a safety poster. So choose one or more of the rules listed above. So there's about 30 rules. Choose one of those rules and create a poster that displays that information. Uh, it, it could be very simple, it might be a little bit more complex, but we're going to use those to inform others that might be not, uh, unfamiliar with the lab to the rules in, uh, that we follow. So uh, there's lots for you to do. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, and I appreciate you watching Lesson 1. Hopefully we'll be on to Lesson 2 in no time. Thanks very much, everyone.